Did you know it is actually possible to turn a Next.js project into an Android app? That can be published on Google Play, where users can install them on their phone and use them just like any native app? I was surprised as well. Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'll show you how to create a native-like app using Next.js, Tailwind CSS, and Shad CNUI that you can publish on app stores. We'll focus on building a TWA that can be published on Google Play, but the underlying logic here can be used to publish the app in Apple's App Store or Microsoft Store as well. By the end of this video, we'll have a Next.js app deployed on Vercel for free. We'll have this Next.js app turned into a PWA, then have it turned into a Trusted Web Activity, or TWA. That can be published on the Google Play Store. If this is interesting to you, it would be really appreciated if you'd hit the subscribe button and like this video as I'm just starting out on this channel, and it would help a lot. Thank you. Let's go over a technical definition of what a TWA is. TWA is a specification developed by Google a couple of years ago, since Chrome version 72 on Android. It is an extension of the PWA specification. TWA, or Trusted Web Activity, is a new way to open your web app content, such as your progressive web app, PWA, from your Android app using a protocol based on custom tabs. Content in a TWA is trusted. The app and the site it opens are expected to come from the same developer. This is verified using digital asset links. All of the content rendered in a TWA comes from the web. They're rendered by the user's browser in exactly the same way as a user would see it in their browser, except they are run full screen. So in layman's terms, a TWA is just a digitally signed PWA that's wrapped in an Android executable. These apps can be installed almost instantly as build sizes will likely be fewer than a couple of megabytes. Also, you as a developer do not have to release an update for the app. You can just update your web application and the user will have access to the latest state whenever they open their app, just like a website. This removes so much headache when maintaining a code base because in regular native app development, you always have to be aware that your user base may have arbitrary versions of your app installed on their phones. And if you want to make any changes, you have to be careful not to break the functionality of your system for users with older versions. One common question developers have when considering TWA is how they compare to alternative tools like React Native, Flutter, or other cross-platform development frameworks, especially when accessing native device functionalities. A TWA by design leverages web technologies and relies on the capabilities of progressive web apps. This means that for accessing native device functionalities, you're limited to what the browser API provides, such as geolocation, camera access, push notifications, and file handling. While this is sufficient for many use cases, it doesn't cover deeper integrations like Bluetooth or native biometric authentication. In contrast, tools like React Native or Flutter allow direct access to native APIs, giving you full control over device-specific functionalities. This makes them more suitable for complex apps that require extensive hardware access or high performance in areas like animations and gaming. For many apps, particularly content-based or e-commerce platforms or financial apps, TWAs strike the perfect balance between performance and simplicity. All right, that's enough explaining. Let's jump into code. The application itself is going to be an Instagram clone with an endlessly scrollable homepage. We may build an actual functional app with working profiles and authentication in another video later using this setup, but the app itself is not the focus of this video. The tool chain is. That said, the source code in this repo is a complete Next.js, Tailwind CSS, Shad CN UI template that you can easily expand on in your own project. I've already prepared a GitHub repository with all the code you'll need. The link to the GitHub repository is in the description of this video. There is a deploy button in the README file. You can use it to effortlessly clone this repo and deploy it on Vercel simultaneously. We need this application to be deployed to a public URL in order for digital signatures to be fetched. After clicking on the deploy button and finishing the setup, copy the URL of your deployed app. We'll be needing it later on. Go to your GitHub account and copy the URL of the repo you just created. Let's clone the repo and get everything set up. Open your terminal, navigate to your working directory, and run the git clone command. Once cloned, open the folder with IDE of your choice. I'm going to be using VS Code. You don't need to install the dependencies and run it on your local machine to follow along with the tutorial. The source code for this project looks like any other Shad CN UI project. It uses Next.js version 14 and includes almost all the components you would need to create such a project. 
The major difference is it has been set up to be a PWA. Let's go over the next JS configuration file. Here we've added PWA support using the Servist package. Servist is a collection of JavaScript libraries for progressive web apps. It is a fork of Workbox due to its development being stagnated. The configuration includes options for enabling service workers and specifying the caching strategy. Now, let's look at the service worker file called sw.ts in the app directory. This file is a boilerplate service worker that takes care of the most basic caching duties. We also need a manifest.json file in the app directory of our next JS project. This file provides metadata about the app, the color scheme, default orientation of the app, and icons used to access the app. That's it for the PWA part. Now let's turn our PWA into a TWA. We use PWA Builder to create an Android build from our PWA. Alternatively, we could have used Bubblewrap CLI to generate a TWA project, but PWA Builder has performed perfectly for me every time, and it is easier to use. PWA Builder is a free and easy-to-use web application funded by Microsoft that transforms your progressive web app into a built Android project APK and AAB files. First, open up a new tab on your browser and open the URL you see on the screen. On the homepage, you'll see a field where you can enter your web app's URL. Type in the full URL of your deployed web application. Once you've entered the URL, click the Start button. PWA Builder will now analyze your PWA by scanning your website to ensure it meets the PWA standards. You'll see a report that checks for installability, performance, and service worker functionality. If your PWA passes these checks, you'll see a green checkmark for all required features. If not, fix any issues highlighted in the report before proceeding. Once everything looks good, click the Package for Stores button to continue. Now you'll land on the Platform Selection page. Find the section labeled Android and click the Generate Package button. It will prompt you to customize the metadata for your app. These fields determine how your app will appear to users in the Google Play Store. Most fields have self-explanatory titles, so we're going to go to the next step and click the Download Package button to proceed. After a few moments, PWA Builder will generate the Android build files. A zip file will be downloaded to your computer that includes the APK file, the AAB app bundle file, and the AssetLinks.json file. If you try to publish this app on Google Play, Google will send a request to the URL of your application and check if it is a valid PWA, fetch some data from the manifest.json file, and fetch the digital signature from this AssetLinks.json file. This file includes a hash signature that establishes the trust relationship between your app and website. So we need to add the AssetLinks.json file to our web application. To do this, we need to have a folder called well-known inside the public directory of our next JS project and move the asset links JSON file in there. Now, the only thing you need to do is to commit your changes to your GitHub repo and Vercel will take care of the rest. After you commit the changes and push to your GitHub repository, Vercel will deploy those changes and the asset links JSON file will be accessible at a URL that looks like this. This step is crucial for the trusted web activity to work as expected. That's it. You've successfully done all you need for your PWA to become a TWA. You have the Android build files and the digital signature deployed to your website. With these files, you're ready to test your app and submit it to the Google Play Store. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or run into issues. Thanks for watching. Till the next time.